Hey everybody, Michael Pavlovich here, and in this video we're going to cover the new character creator base meshes that Reillusion just released that you can download for free and use in your projects. Now, we've covered in previous videos how you can send base meshes from character creator to your program of choice. However, with this free download, you don't even need character creator installed. Just open or import the provided base bodies found in the zip file into your program of choice, and then just start making your character. Speaking of the zip file, go ahead and click on the link in the description of this video to go to the download page click the download now button watch the short video and then unzip the downloaded file to a location on your computer I'm just gonna throw that on my desktop so let's talk about what's inside the folder the first thing you're gonna see is a bunch of different file formats we're gonna cover these in detail later on in the video and inside those folders you're gonna see five varieties of base meshes a fully neutral base a realistic male and female base and a stylized male and female base so pick whichever base model makes the most sense to start with depending on what you're working on we're gonna take a closer look later in the video as well, but just as an overview, you can see they all have nice uniform quad surfaces with edge loops built specifically for animation and deformations, morphs and blend shape creation in mind. Also, each base has identical UDIM UV maps and vertex order and comes with both base body texture maps and topology template maps to help you put your volumes exactly where you want them while you're sculpting. So. Let's talk about why you might want to use these base meshes as opposed to any number of base meshes that you can find on the internet. Here's my big reason. As you've seen in our previous videos, sculpting a character is just the beginning of the fun that you can have. With these character creator bases, once you're done sculpting your static character, you're just a few button pushes away from built-in rigging, weights, facial expression blend shapes, a whole ecosystem of possibilities you can take advantage of to animate, simulate, pose, Basically breathe life into your character and use for anything from an animated scene to a posed 3D print and everything in between. So long story short, if I make a character and I don't feel like bringing it to the life, no big deal. It's still a good predictable performance mesh to start with. However, if by the time I'm done sculpting my character and I'm like, man, I wish I could have it pose it easily or have it run around for this fun little video clip I want to post on social media. I'm literally just a few button pushes away from making that happen. Uh, button pushes that we're going to cover in this video. But if I start with some other base mesh and then decide to bring it to life, making a skeleton, skin weights, creating facial blend shapes, creating a control rig for all of that, applying or creating an animation for it, it's gonna be way more than a few button presses to make that happen. Not saying you shouldn't learn how to do that or begin your journey to being able to do that, but character creator and using these base meshes is a really awesome way to lower that barrier to entry and get acclimated to those workflows so that you can dive deeper and just become ingrained in that type of creation. So that's a big plus to me. If I start with these base meshes, animation, expressions, life is right there at my fingertips just seconds away. So before we get into the demo portion of this video where I actually take these files and make characters with them and animate them, uh, we're gonna, just gonna start with an overview of what these file formats are. So back on our desktop, we're gonna go into our CC character base and in the, well, we have an FBX, OBJ and Z tool and then topology maps. We're gonna start with OBJ. We'll double click in there. We'll go to tune neutral M. This is our neutral male and we have an OBJ file in here. So I'm gonna copy this path here, and then we're gonna open up a general 3D program. Any 3D program that can import an OBJ, feel free to use whatever program of choice you want to manipulate this OBJ file. So in this case, we'll use Blender, File, Import, OBJ, there it is. And we'll go ahead and paste this in here and we'll double click the neutral male OBJ. If we hit F, here is our OBJ file. If we go in here to our shaded mode, you're gonna see the texture maps are already hooked up. Uh, if we go back here and turn on our wireframe, you can see here's the geometry layout. And in the case of Blender, what you would probably do is go in here to the sculpting tab. We'll hit F to frame. We'll turn on X symmetry and you would go in here and just start manipulating this geometry however you see fit. Same thing for a program like ZBrush. If you want to go into ZBrush, go in here and say import, tool import, and then exact same folder, OBJ, two neutral male OBJ. We'll drag that out and here you can see we have our geometry ready to be manipulated, ready to be turned into the type of character that we want to make. And again, stay tuned for more instructions on how to 
go from this character all the way to the animated part. We're going to skip that for now and we'll go ahead and well, while we're in ZBrush, we'll go ahead and keep that open. Let's go in here to tool and instead of import, I'm going to go in here to load tool. And if we go in here to our character create base Z tool folder, and again, that two neutral male, here is a CC base body Z tool. So if we load this one up, this is a little different than the OBJ file. The OBJ file, as you can see, if we go in here to the subtool menu, it's just one mesh. I mean, it still has eyelashes and eye occlusion and eyeballs and teeth and tongue and stuff like that, but it's all one mesh that you need to manipulate. Uh, same thing in Blender. It's all just one mesh in here. Uh, back in ZBrush, if I go to the Z tool option, you're going to see that it is a bunch of different meshes. We have a base body, upper teeth, tongue, tear line, lower teeth, eye occlusion, and base eye. So at any point, we can go in here to like solo mode and just work on the base body. And again, we're going to get deeper into how to manipulate this to create whatever kind of character you want to animate later. But just as just again, brief overview of here's the Z tool file and you'll even see in the base body, it's already subdivided up to subdivision level five. So you can drop down to subdivision level one, make general changes and then continue to subdivide up and sculpt in detail that you can bake off later. Uh, last, let's go ahead and look at that FBX file. And so back in Blender, let's go in here to file new general. We'll say don't save, we'll delete that cube. And instead of going here to file import, the FBX file has a bunch of really cool stuff in it, like uh, bones and blend shapes that we can utilize. So have, knowing that, for this FBX file, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to this plugin I have installed called the CC Character Creator iClone Pipeline plugin. Uh, if you want to know more about this, there's going to be a link to this pipeline web page. If you scroll down, there's a ton of auto setup for any number of programs that you might be using in conjunction with Character Creator. In this case, if we click on Blender, there's download auto setup and then a download page that you can go and download, as well as there's a whole course worth of videos of how to use Blender in your Character Creator pipeline if you're so inclined. So you go and watch these videos. In my case, I'm going to keep it real simple because I'm not a Blender uh, aficionado just yet. So we're going to go in here to our, uh, again, CCIC pipeline. We're going to say import character and we're going to bring in our FBX file from here. So again, just make sure we're in the FBX folder. We'll stick with that two neutral base here and double click that FBX file. This is going to set up all of the materials and uh, stuff for us so that everything looks as expected. So if we zoom in on our file here, here is our character. So again, if we want to go in here and uh, look at our topology, in fact, let's go over here to the modeling tab and we'll switch over to faces and we'll hit F to frame. And here we can get a really good look of the nice topology uh, that makes up this character here. And again, it shares the exact same topology and UVs with all the other base meshes. So they're morphable between them. Uh, in fact, if I go to UV editing mode and we zoom out a little bit and let's switch over to vertex mode, we'll grab a little section control A. We can see uh, the U dims, here's the head, body, arms, legs, nails, and eyelashes that make up our character. And we can also go back to object mode here. Let's go into the shading section and we'll hit F to frame again. You can see it has the default textures already plugged in. However, we can swap these out. Again, I'm gonna go back to my desktop folder. We're gonna to go to the topology map section and I can just drag this head file right in here. I'm gonna temporarily swap out this color map for the head so you can just see what that topology map looks like. There we go, so if we zoom in, here's the topology map applied to our head. Of course, we can just delete this out of our scene here and just plug that color diffuse map back in and we'll hop back over to layout tab. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off our wireframe here. And if we want to see the colors and layout, we can go in here and just turn on that little shader option there. Now with our character selected and we go in here to the data tab, you're going to see here's the shape keys or the blend shapes being used on the character. So if I zoom in here and we do this V open, we can see we can do open and close the mouth. We can do little facial shapes here. So these are all the shapes that come with the FBX file that comes with the skeleton and it comes with the blend shapes. And of course, if you want to create a control rig and plug these in, you can. And in fact, that's part of the reason why we import our character with this plugin. We can very quickly create a control rig for this. First, let's go ahead and select our character, go down here to our viewport display and we'll choose in front so you can see the skeleton here. And then we'll open up the rigging and animation tab in the plugin. And we'll just do a quick full face rig, rigify, and that's gonna build a control rig for moving our body and our facial shapes. 
So here's our control rig. We can go in here from object mode down here to pose mode. We can grab these boxes. Of course, we can move them around. We can grab the hand here and uh, you know, position and rotate the hand. And we'll grab a foot and we'll go ahead and raise this up. And you'll see everything's deforming as expected. Uh, of course, I would need to go in here and know what I'm doing. There we go. Uh, and then we also have the facial rig. So if we grab the eyeball control rig here, we can move the eyes around. You can see as we're moving these eyes around, those shapes are automatically kicking in. So the skin around the eyes is moving. And of course you can go through here and for example, we'll grab this jaw here and we'll rotate and you can open and close the mouth. And you're gonna see again, the nose is moving subtly, the mouth is opening and all the right verts are moving based on those original blend shapes that came in with the file. Now here in Blender, if you do wanna go ahead and modify this character to however you want and then export this as a CC avatar into Character Creator, you can do that. I'm gonna have some time-lapse of a Reillusion video going through this process while I'm talking. I'm not super proficient in that just yet. So again, I'm gonna have resources for you to click and you can go through that process if you wish. So now that we've had a brief overview of the different file formats, let's dive a little bit deeper. I mean, we kind of went into FBX a little bit. So we're gonna dive a little deeper into OBJ and Z tool and taking our character creation and then again, breathing life into them. Uh, again, for the OBJ, whatever program you want to use to move those obj verts around go ahead and use i prefer zbrush so i'm going to go through the zbrush method you follow along with whatever program you want to use uh here back in zbrush this is the z tool so over here with the sub tool you see we got a bunch of pieces let's go back to that original file here this is our obj that we imported we went in here again to tool import we were in the cc character base obj to neutral male OBJ here. So just import that file. It's going to import as one mesh with uh, multiple poly groups. So if you hold down control shift, you can go through here and control shift tap and go through and see, okay, this is the tear line. This is the occlusion mesh. This is the tongue, teeth, uh, gums, and eyeballs and base body uh, with the eyelashes built in. Uh, so if we're gonna move these verts around, there's one thing we need to make sure that we don't do and that's change the vert order. Uh, what I mean by that is we can't add or subtract any verts from this mesh because these verts rely on a relationship with blend shapes later on when we go to animate this for facial animation and some other cool features that we can use in Character Creator that rely on vertex order. So for instance, I can't go into my Z modeler brush and like, you know, insert single edge loop and insert an edge loop here or go through here and delete any polygons. Don't delete or add any polygons, uh, but move them around as much as you want. So it's still pretty free to do what you'd like, uh, but just with the one caveat that you can't change the vert order. So for example, let's go ahead and I'm gonna turn on X for Xsymmetry, hold down Control, we'll go in here to Mask Lasso. I'm gonna mask uh, the head here, I'm gonna Control Tap to blur that mask a little bit, uh, Control Tap to Invert, W, and go ahead and set this pivot in here. Now this isn't a ZBrush tutorial by any means, if you want more of that, go to my YouTube channel, we'll get you caught up. Uh, but we're just gonna do some general changes. We're gonna go ahead and scale this head up a little bit, if we want to make the arms bigger, you can do a uniform scale. And in the case of ZBrush, we need to go turn on dynamic or LSIM with dynamic turned off. And now we can scale the arms up or down on that axis here. So uh, we'll scale them up a little bit. If you want to lengthen the arms and not just do a uniform scale, what I'll do is like I'll grab like maybe mid bicep and then just kind of pull these verts down and then maybe mid what was that forearm, pull these verts down. We can grab the hand here, control tap to invert, control tap the you know, blur that mask a little bit. And then we'll go in here and again, maybe we'll scale these hands up. So, you know, and also don't worry about scale as far as how tall or how big the character is. This is just a base male size. And if we want to make the legs shorter, what's gonna happen is when we bring this back into character creator later, again, when we wanna bring breathe life into this character, that's where character creator will go in and set it on the ground and make sure that all the bones are working where they should be. You don't have to worry about any of that. So for instance, if I want to go through here and shrink these legs, I can move the legs further apart. I can move them in a little bit if I want to. It's totally fine. So we're going to make a really weird looking uh, mutant kind of character here. Uh, and again, it's ZBrush. Have fun. Go in here and make things, inflate things, move things around. And if you want to sculpt detail, you can do that as well. 
When I said don't change vert order, what that means is don't add or subtract any geometry from the lowest subdivision, basically your base subdivision here. But if you want to, you can go in here to geometry and hit divide and subdivide your mesh through your subdivision level. So if we want to, you know, go in here and add a little bit of uh, detail in here, maybe, you know, dial in a little bit of a rib cage and maybe give them a little bit more of a belly. We'll go in here with our clay brush and just kind of sculpt in a little belly here and maybe put some definition in the arms. Uh, we can totally do that. Now, when you're going through and you're detailing out your character, these details aren't going into Character Creator. Uh, basically, you'll subdivide up subdivision level two, three, four, five, and six, get all your details, and then you'll bake those details down to your low res base mesh. This subdivision level one is what we're going to actually export into Character Creator, and then anything above this will bake off. In fact, if you want to know more about that, you can go to my YouTube channel and scroll down to the Real Illusion Character Creator section, and right in here, the Character Creator by Pipeline Body and Accessories and Clothing, this first section here will tell you all about how to subdivide your model, bake maps in Substance Painter with the Substance Painter bridge that Character Creator has, and you can get all your details from your ZBrush sculpt onto your character creator model. In this case, we're just kind of doing a weirdo character here. Let's do something a little bit more maybe difficult as far as changing verts uh, might be. So what I can do is I can control shift tap the head here and that'll select again the head poly groups and then here's all the poly groups for all the other pieces of the, the head here, the eyeballs. So I'm gonna control shift tap just the head area. Well, we got mask lasso. I'm gonna mask the eye area here and then control tap to blur that. Control shift drag. And now I'm gonna mask all the eye parts and then control shift tap or control tap to invert my mask. So what that did was basically unmask the eye area and then unmask the eyeballs. Uh, also, I have some unmasked area in the back of the head as well because um, it masks all the way through. So we'll go ahead and mask that back. So now if I go to unmask mesh center, only the area around the skin and the eyelashes around the eye are unmasked and then the eyeball mesh itself is unmasked and then everything else, the teeth, the body, uh, the nails, all of that stuff is still masked. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and, you know, let's say we want to shrink these eyeballs, maybe move them closer together. And, you know, maybe we want to go in here and make this brow ridge uh, a little more. Let me turn down my Z intensity here on my smooth. Uh, brow ridge a little bit more pronounced, maybe give them a little bit of a different nose, maybe weaken this chin a little bit. Again, it's ZBrush, have fun. Go in here and uh, let's switch over here to mask pin. We'll mask these ears out, uh, invert the mask, go in here and, I don't know, scale them up. Uh, maybe you wanna do maybe goblin ears or elf ears, you can go in here and just go in here and do whatever you want. Again, have fun with it. And like I said, detail it out as much as you want. You can bake that detail off later. Let's say <laughs> this is our this is our awesome character that we want to take into Character Creator. Before we do that, there's one more thing I want to bring up and that is poly groups. When I go to export this, again, I'm on subdivision level one. We just have our one mesh here. We didn't add anything. We didn't take anything away. Uh, and then I just need to go in here to tool export. However, in ZBrush underneath preferences, import, export, uh, underneath the export options, group is turned on. So if you change the poly group, sometimes ZBrush does some weird mesh breaking apart stuff uh, based on the poly groups and that can cause problems. So if you wanted to, you could go in here and you could say, okay, poly groups, um, we can do auto groups with UV. And now we can go through here and we can like control shift tap the eyelashes and isolate those uh, from the head. We can isolate the head and then we actually have the mouth bag uh, in here that you can select. And also the uh, inside of the eyeball cavity that the eyeball sits in. All the nails have their own uh, poly group here. So it's a little bit more of a, a granular poly group, but I don't really wanna go through and export this OBJ with these poly groups because I know that could be problematic with that group turned on. Um, so I want to, if I want to get my original poly groups back, all I have to do is with these verts where they are, control tap that latest point in history, go switch out to your simple brush, say always switch, control N to clear your canvas, go in here to import and just re-import that character creator base OBJ to neutral male just import that back in. So now here's the two neutral male with the original poly groups, vertex order, everything is just pristine, just like you originally imported it. And because we stored your other vertex positions in history, all we have to do is go to BMG, that's the morph brush, 
and uh, let's tap S on our keyboard and make our draw size really big, or go up here and change your draw size. Take your Z add, make it 100, and then just brush over your entire object. That's going to move these pristine polygroup, original polygroup vertex uh, positions into the ones you sculpted. So now they match. I can go back to our other one where all the polygroups are all messed up. I can even go in here to subtool, say delete, get that out of our ZBrush session. I don't want to be confused. So here's our new character back to the original polygroups. And now I feel better about exporting this OBJ. So tool, export. Uh, I'm just going to export it right back into the desktop character creator OBJ file. Feel free to put this wherever you'd like. I'll call it tune neutral M underscore mutant, and that'll export the OBJ for me. And in order to take this to the next level or to go from a static sculpt that just kind of stands there um, into something that we can pose, animate, do a whole bunch of really cool stuff with uh, in character creator. So let's go ahead and hop into character creator. And underneath the content template, let's go in here to actor, character, base. And this is where all the base bodies are. Here's our neutral female, neutral male, uh, tune female, and then tune male. We'll go ahead and double click that because that's what we started with uh, when we imported that into ZBrush. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a morph. So when we morph this guy into the shape that we have, the bones will follow along with it, and then he'll be rigged and animatable and, you know, ready to go. So how we do that is we're going to go down here to remove, and we're going to say restore bind pose. That's going to put him in that neutral A pose. We're going to go in here to the blend shape tab, and we're going to go in here... And we're going to click this plus sign to make a new custom blend shape using the OBJ that we exported earlier. So uh, let's go ahead and name it. So this morph name up here, we'll just call this mutant. And down here under the target morph, because this, this is what we want to turn our body into is the target. We're going to go down here and change this to file and it's looking for an OBJ file. So let's go ahead and click this folder and we're going to load up that two neutral M mutant that we exported from ZBrush. Just double click that. And then right here where that says check some file path, that's looking for an OBJ key. So if you click this folder, that's going to put you again back in this root of the two neutral M mail. Uh, there's an OBJ key. Just load that file up. And the last thing we need to do is tell character creator when you move into this, when you move the geometry from this neutral body into my body that I created, go ahead and move those bones along with it. So make sure you check on this adjust bones to fit morph. Once you're done, go ahead and say, okay. And now uh, we're still in the morph tab. So let's go up here to currently used. And you're going to see right now, this neutral body actually has two morphs applied. If we take the slider and move it all the way down to zero, that's going to morph the head and then morph the body back to just a neutral base. And then go ahead and click on actor and then go up here to the search bar and type in mutant. There's our mutant slider we just created. We can drag this all the way to the right and you're going to see it moved that geometry into that <laughs> interesting character that we made. And the other thing it did, if we go over here to our bone tab, if you don't see this, go up here to window, turn on your bone manager, hit F3, go in here and turn on this first button, this little bone visibility. And you're going to see those bones when that morph happened, it moved everything into place uh, right where it should be given where you move the geometry. So we're in good shape as far as animation goes. So let's go back to our content tab or in the bone tab, let's go ahead and turn off visibility and then go back to content. So let's go ahead and test this out. Let's go in here to the motion menu down here. We're gonna say soft physics, spin around F, and this is gonna do a little spin around animation. You're gonna see a little bit of facial animation and the body moving around. Now on those blinks, you can see it's kind of double translating. There's an easy fix for that. Everything else looks good. Uh, go up here to character and do a correct eye blink. Now let's choose another one. Let's go in here to mail walk. I'm going to play this. You can see we get a little bit of an eye blink in there. He's walking around. He's looking cool. Uh, knuckles almost scraping the ground, but that's uh, as designed. And we have a whole character uh, ready to do whatever we'd like to uh, with it. So let's go in here to motion pose a pose. Uh, this is just a nice relaxed A pose. And from this point on, make continue making this character uh, however you'd like. In fact, while we were moving verts around in ZBrush, we can do the exact same thing in Character Creator. If we go back to this tab, we can go down here uh, to say edit mesh and we can move verts and faces around, or we can go into this morph tab here and let's go ahead and get rid of that mutant search term here. You can go into this body, for example, and say, you know, if we want to 
go into the arm and say arm strong. We can go through here and make the arm more muscular. We can go down here to the head and we could, if you have this is from one of the morph packs, you can go in here and make the face heavier. You can also double click the name to go from 100% to negative 100% to zero. You can go into nose and change, you know, any of these nose, uh, nose sliders to kind of go through and make changes to your mesh. You can also go up here to this morph button and go through and just kind of push and pull your character. So if you didn't get it exactly right, or now that you see uh, this character in Character Creator and you want to make some changes, feel free. You can go in here and make the arms longer. And while you're moving this around, the, you know, we're making the legs thicker, we're making the torso taller, we're making the hands bigger. Maybe, well, let's not make those hands bigger. They're already pretty big. Let's make those feet bigger. And you're going to see when I'm down here, it's like, oh, I can't scale the feet. Well, we're already in the foot section. Just go in here and search for scale. Our foot scale is right at the top, uh, bottom here. So we can go ahead and make the feet bigger here. And if you want to over crank it, you can go in here and type in like 300 if you want. Or that's eh, a little much. Let's do 200. There we go. So now we've got a character that moves and animates and emotes. Uh, in fact, let's go in here to content. Let's dress them up. Uh, you can go in here to like cloth you know, shirts and apply, double click these, apply a shirt and shorts. We can also just go in here to actor character clothed. These are fully clothed characters. I'm going to put Kevin's uh, outfit on him. I'm going to say no, say replace outfit only, keep character. And that's going to take his shirt and jeans and shoes and apply them to my character. So now he's fully decked out. And we could even go in here to content, animation, motion, human male, perform. Let's, you know, do a saloon door. Just double click that animation and there we go we got a fully clothed character uh, that we've made you might need a little bit of hair so we can go into the hair tab down here or you can also look up here so here's you know skin makeup hair you can click hair these are realistic hairstyles you can go ahead and for example you know apply a, a short hair here Got a cool short hair. Or if you want to stick with the stylized look, we can even go in here to stylized and throw on Eddie's stylized hair. There we go. So now we have a whole character that we can customize and animate. Go in and to the motion tab and edit pose. Use the dummy over here to select or select on the character itself to move things and rotate things around. Or again, go in here and clench fish. You can go in here. There's so many things you can do. And again, this kind of goes back to what I said at the beginning, which is making a character is one thing, but the ability to go through here and edit facial or do facial animation, uh, you know, you can go in here and let's grab the jaw joint and move this around. Let's grab the eyeballs and move this around here. We could even go into, in fact, go into expressions. We can go happy. We can go angry. We can go scared. We can add expression wrinkles. We'll get into that in the uh, next character that we do. But you can see how easy it is to take an OBJ, again, in any program that you like to use to move verts around, use that. Then at any point, if you're ready to breathe life into your character, you can see how easy it is to go ahead and do that. So there's one more file format to deep dive, well, not deep dive into. It's the exact same thing as the OBJ format. The Z tool format is just moving verts around. So if we go back into ZBrush here, if we go back to the original Z tool that we imported, this was the Tune Mail, you're gonna see the, the poly groups are a little different. You actually have a head and eyelash and arms and stuff. Uh, it's already been subdivided up to subdivision level five. So it's already ready for you to go in and sculpt your detail. And there's multiple subtools in here. So you have upper teeth, tongue, tear line, lower teeth, eye occlusion, and base eye, all as separate subtools. So this is a, if you're a ZBrush user, this Z tool format's a little bit easier to use. The only caveat is two caveats. Number one, you can't break the vert order on any of these meshes. They rely on those vertex order. Uh, so you can't add any edge loops or extrude any faces. You can't delete any edge loops. Leave the geometry alone. You can subdivide it, no problem, but just don't add any extra loops, if you know what I mean. So uh, for example, let's go ahead and we'll do another load tool. Cause again, tool load tool, We'll go uh, again back into that CC character base folder. Uh, Z tool is the type of file that we're going to use. And we'll start, you know what, we'll do the neutral male. We'll load up the CC base body for the neutral male. There we go. So if we're going to do like a realistic human, uh, this is where we would start. And I'll just bring this up again as well. In the character creator pipeline body, 
this whole playlist is relevant to you. If you're using ZBrush to make a character, the only difference is instead of loading up and free neutral base that you just downloaded, I just sent it from CC over to uh, ZBrush. But the exact same uh, process applies if you want to go and sculpt an anatomy, you know. Just type in anatomy into my YouTube channel or the whole bunch of live streams we've done. You know, even this vampire anatomy sculpt, that was on a character creator base body. So you're in good shape. Uh, so just like before, what I usually do is I'll drop down to subdivision level one and I'll go and do my base changes. So if we want to make this guy more muscular, you know, go in here with our inflate brush, uh, turn tap X to go into X symmetry. You can see our brush size is really small. Just double tap that dynamic. That'll make your brush size behave a little more uh, normally. And then we'll just go through here and We'll add some muscles in here and we'll add some muscles in here. Uh, you know, change this guy to whatever you want to make him uh, whatever character you want. And then when you're ready to go to the next level, we'll go up to subdivision level two and then we'll go in here and refine. So we'll use our standard brush and put in a little serratus anterior and some obliques and, you know, go in and put some abs on this guy and chisel him out, right? I'm going to use some movie magic in order to uh, get this a, a little bit further along. So I'm... Also, one thing to consider is I'm on subdivision level five now. If you wanna go higher, no problem. Just hit control D on your keyboard or hit divide. That'll go to subdivision level six. You can go to subdivision level seven if you wanna to go to like super poor detail. You know, we're in 14 million polygon territory here. So do what you want. But uh, I'm gonna to go to BMG because I have a little morph stored and I'm gonna go ahead and morph this guy into our uh, final character here. So here we go. So he's, uh, we've, we've morphed him into our, our new character. Let's pretend like I spent a lot of time sculpting here. And in fact, if you wanna go through here and poly paint, you can. Let's go ahead and turn on our skin shader here. Uh, here we're going through and we're, we're gonna go ahead and paint this character up. So get as detailed as you want. So if you zoom in here, you can see this is all transferred from scan data, but again, this is just vertex color. You can go through here and just paint. You know, if we go through and we go into RGB, you can go through and paint uh, the color. And, and again, anything, we're in subdivision level six. Subdivision level one is what's actually going to get sent over to character creator, this level of geometry. All of this detail is gonna be baked off including this poly paint detail, all of that, no, minus the red there, all of this is gonna be baked out. And once more, let me just call your attention to this playlist right here, the character creator pipeline, body accessories and clothing. That'll walk you through how I basically get this from my high res ZBrush into character creator. You'll also notice through movie magic editing, I've added some subtools down here. So we've got some ports on the body. If I go to solo mode here, We've got some uh, little little ports that are embedded in his body, as well as, keep in mind as these verts are moving around, the upper teeth, tongue, tear line, lower teeth, all of this stuff is moving along with it. So you need to make sure that as we're moving the head around, go ahead and move these objects around too. Just so you know, uh, if I wanna do that, uh, if I'm just moving stuff around, I'm actually gonna turn off poly paint here. And we'll drop down to subject level one. So if I wanna move, in this case, I wanna move his whole head up, I'm gonna hold down control, go in here to mask lasso. I'm going to mask his head and go ahead and blur that out. And now if I move his head up, you know, it's gonna leave all of these head pieces behind. So what I need to do is go in here to this move multiple button, control shift drag over all the subtools that I wanna move. And now the head ports and the teeth and the tongue and the eyes all of that will move along with it. So instead of like in the OBJ where we're able to, it was all one mesh, this one you just got to turn on move multiple, mask the objects that you don't want, and then it, everything will move around together. So we'll go ahead and turn move multiple off. And just like in the OBJ as well, you don't want to change your vert order on any of these subtools here. Uh, if you're going to add stuff like the ports on the body, or if you want to make a shirt, let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to duplicate off this body. I'm going to hold down shift, bent down arrow. Uh, we'll go ahead and go up to like subdivision level three. We'll say delete higher, delete lower. I'm going to mask on here where I might want a shirt. We'll hit control W to make this its own poly group. Control shift tap, delete hidden. Again, this isn't a ZBrush course. So if you can't keep up, uh, you know, my, my YouTube channel is chock full of shirt tutorials you can follow along. So I'm just gonna kind of go through and again, we'll say delete hidden. 
uh, deformation polish by feature, uh, zero mesh half depth size down to zero. Again, we're just making a real quick shirt we can throw on this guy here. And I'm going to say Z modeler brush, Q mesh poly group all. We'll go ahead and inflate it. There we go. So now he's got a shirt. So we'll go ahead and rename this shirt. And so now we have shirt, ports in his head, gloves and body, all of his base stuff. We didn't, the vert order on the stuff you create, the custom stuff, that doesn't matter. Make it whatever vert you want, name it whatever you want. All of the base body, the CC base body stuff in here, don't change the vert order. You can subdivide, but don't add or subtract verts. And keep the naming. You don't want to change the names. Those are the two caveats. So now how do we get this out of ZBrush over into Character Creator? Let's hop back into Character Creator here. This is where we left off with our uh, previous character. I'm just going to go in here to File, New Project, No. We're going to, in the Modify panel, go in here to Load Neutral Base. And just like we did in our previous character, remove, restore bind pose. We'll head back into ZBrush. One thing I like to do, just to keep it clean, is go in here to Preferences, Go Z, clear cache files. That'll just clear any previous Go Z's out so nothing gets confused. We have all of these visible subtools here. So I'm going to say, uh, well, you could say Go Z visible. I'm going to say Go Z all. What that's going to do is drop everything down to its lowest subdivision level and send it over to Character Creator. And you're going to notice all the CC objects here are set to update. It's going to take what exists on this neutral body and update it. Uh, all the other stuff, it doesn't know what it is, the ports and the shirt. It's going to uh, default it to create cloth, which is perfect. Uh, the only other thing we need to do is make sure we hit adjust bones to fit morph. We're already in the A pose, which is what we're using. And we can say update. And there we go. We got our muscular guy. A uh, whole new body. He's got his custom shirt on. If we go into the scene tab, you're going to see we have head, gloves, and body ports, and then the shirt. All of the body detail hasn't been updated. That's basically how I would use this Substance Painter bridge. And again, one more time, this playlist right here, Character Creator Pipeline Body, that'll walk you through how to get all that high-res ZBrush goodness uh, baked into a painter file that you could then bring materials in and uh, get that all updated. I'll show you the end result of that in just a second. Now, if we go in here, let's say motion, we'll do another spin around. Everything's rigged, weighted, looking good. And in fact, if we zoom in here, it, it has the default neutral skin on here. So we can even go in here to the material tab. Let's go, uh, make sure your CC, CC3 base plus is selected. We'll go ahead and select the standard skin head. We're gonna scroll down. You can go in, there's so many things you can do in here. We can go in here to, just one example, skin color, activate skin color, color adjustment, activate. You can go through here and you can change the different skin presets to kind of go through and change, you know, the look of your character. You can make, you know, more red, yellow, or black and it'll kind of make a nice skin tone for you. And let's go in here to motion, pose, a pose. This will put it in a relaxed A pose. So if you prefer to sculpt in a relaxed A pose instead of that kind of stodgy A pose with the straight fingers, what you can do, I'm going to go through here in my scene file, select all of these. There's a go Z button up here. I'm going to go Z this back to ZBrush. It's already set the relink. I'm going to say current pose, hit go Z. Everything's moved into place. My poly paint's still applied. I can go in here and say all high. So he's, his low res verts have been moved. I can go through. And again, I'm just going to point you back here. All of these playlists are super relevant to posing things, sending things back and forth to and from ZBrush, baking stuff out. Uh, it's so incredibly powerful what you can do. So hopping back and forth between these two programs. But also, just like we did on the previous mesh, we can go in here, we can turn on our morph or go in here to our morphs. You can use our morph slider to kind of get a different look going. Or again, turning on the morph button, we could say, hey, you know what, I want his head a little bit bigger, his ears a little smaller, or I want his brows to be more protruding, or we can even go in here to content, put on a country style hair. If we want to turn him into a, just a regular person, we can go through here, we can just delete all these extra things that we brought over. We can go in here to content. Again, you can load him up with clothing and accessories. Or like I did earlier, we can just hop in here to character clothed, throw Kevin's clothing on him just by going in here to replace outfit. There we go. He's just a big, burly, muscular guy. Speaking of, we can go in here to our animation. Motion. You can go in here and you can, uh, you know, these are this is a content pack from the uh, Reillusion store. So you can go through here and 
don't know, we'll do a, a violent huff. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all sorts of cool stuff you can do. Another thing we should probably mention too, let's go in here to motion, pose, a pose. Let's get a uh, close up on his face. We're gonna go in here to wrinkle check, dramatic male. And you're gonna see another really cool thing we can do is while we're playing this animation, uh, when his eyebrows go up, there's no wrinkles. However, we can go in here to content. If you have the, if you go in here to actor at the very bottom, there's expression wrinkles. And he's, you know, we do have wrinkle essential packs in here. You can put on stylized wrinkles for our previous character that we made. Or since this one's a little more realistic, we'll go into realistic, shallow, varied. We'll just apply expression wrinkles to him so that when his face moves around, that'll go through and drive uh, wrinkles. And again, I'm just going to shout this out. This character creator pipeline face will go into face tools and you can make your own custom wrinkles uh, since these are, these are just generic, but they work pretty good. So if we go in here and hit plus, you're going to see wrinkles start showing up in the forehead when his face starts moving around as that little extra level of realism in here. And again, just like when we are, let's go ahead and just do a, we'll do a dance turn. So if he's dancing around, we can go through and we can kind of scrub through. We'll do like a little point here. If, we're, if we like this as a starting point for our pose, we can go in here. Let's go in here to our template. I need to mention this too, underneath animation. Instead of just doing animations, you can go in here. There are male poses, so we can say, you know, pose against the wall, his hands going through his body, no problem. Just go in here to the motion tab, we'll say edit pose. Again, we've got this here. I can select either in this, I can go in IK or FK mode. I can hit W. I can move this hand up. I can even go in here and like, you know, move the individual fingers or move the whole hand, or I can even put a gesture on there. So if I go down here to animation gesture, here's a bunch of hand poses. So if I wanna do like a relaxed C on his left hand, I can just double click that, apply it to his left hand, go in here and edit the facial expression in here. Again, you can just double click these for like happy. We'll give them a little bit of a smoldering look. Maybe not super angry, but just a, just a little angry. There we go. Deep, deep in thought here. And there we go. We've gone from a Z tool that was just a base mail, modified it to make it what we want. And again, go through those other playlists. I don't want to load this one up with too much information. But if you want to see the final result, I'm going to go in here to Content Custom. I'll go ahead and load him up. Let's go back here to Motion, Pose, A Pose. You can see here we've got the skin details from Painter, all the scar scars on him, and uh, I guess we still have the hair on there. We got his bolter assigned as an accessory, which we can swap out with our chain sword. We can apply an animation. We can even go in here to our content, down here to stage, Lightroom. We could give it a little bit more of a moody look, maybe authority. We'll swap out the lighting here, we'll hit play. And now we've got him kind of flashing around his uh, chain sword here. And here he is all armored up. And heck, while we're at it, let me go ahead and swap. We'll throw on a quick gun animation here. Let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna turn on this little lock button so he stays kind of kind of put. There we go. So he's got his gun. He's all armored up. There we go. And of course, from here you could throw it into iClone and clean up the animation, or do your own animation, or capture your face and apply it to your character and have it move around. There's so many cool things uh, you could do from here. So again. It's lowering that barrier to entry. There's free base meshes for you to use. And at any point, if you're like, you know what? I started with this base mesh and now I'd like to go through and again, breathe life into it. You can see how easy it is to accomplish that. So thanks for stopping by and keep an eyeball out for more videos detailing how we can take our character creations and then get them moving around again, breathing life into them. We've also got videos on how you can take old scopes that have arbitrary geometry, uh, that could be another base mesh, dynamesh, whatever, and convert it to character creator topology so that again, you can take advantage of all the rigging and animation perks. And like we discussed, even use the pipeline tools to transfer it to any number of applications from Blender to Unreal and everything in between. Also as an aside, I'm on a new capturing and editing backbone pipeline and hit a few snags. So I had to improvise a little bit in the second half, but we'll get there. Again, keep your eyes peeled for more new fun content coming out soon.